When it comes to this list, making it made me realize how much of a great year it's been for JRPGs. I've revised this list multiple times, trying to narrow it down to my absolute favorites, and could probably even double this list if I wanted to include all the things that moved and excited me throughout this year of great games. I like to keep this list to just five very special games though, and for me, it came down to games that I thought were both special and unique, whether it was in terms of what they did with visuals, how they used technology, or the memorable stories they told, and the more I look at this list, the more I feel that these five experiences were really the ones that stood out to me this year. So in what was a very good year overall, here are my five favorite JRPGs from 2021 that I think stood out in a fantastic year of games. Voice of Cards was released in the last quarter of this year as a different kind of project with near writer Yoko Taro at the helm, and as a fan of his work and also the kind of atmosphere its trailers had, I had to give it a try, and I'm pleased to say I got lost in its world of writing and cards as I'd hoped to. Each NPC in town in Voice of Cards has something noteworthy to say, and the way it had me stopping and doing double takes on what I was reading at times is exactly why I loved it, and that's not even to mention all the card turning as you explore and dice that get thrown around to calculate damage or random events that all contribute to the tabletop RPG feel combined with the speed of it being on consoles, and it's that unique atmosphere with great writing that has me hoping we see more of this kind of game maybe as a series. It's the shortest game on this list, but is a great game to get lost in over a weekend or to enjoy unfold at your own pace, and if you enjoy the idea of uncovering twisted stories hiding on the back of these cards in a world with a unique feel, this card-based RPG is a fulfilling experience that I'm I'm very glad I played. Atelier Ryza 2 holds a very special place in my heart in 2021 as it was the first game I fell in love with this year, and since that was in February, I think it set the tone well for the kind of stories I wanted to see more of, and this one full of heart and watching a character grow up even more was the kind of story that made me really excited and ready to experience more heartwarming journeys throughout the year. It also naturally improved on the alchemy mechanics of Atelier in true Gus style to make this once again the most accessible alchemy journey for the Atelier series. It's also the most interesting system in the series, with new features like essences you can put into items being a lot of fun to play with, even leading to what felt like secret items if you really got to experimenting with the system. And everything else felt like it had an upgrade too, with battles adding in the active defending element that kept me always on my toes, and exploration being different with items not being the only thing you were gathering, but also the memories from each place. And these memories gathered built upon the world and history of this new part of the Ryze universe, along with one of the most emotional relationships that impacted me in 2021, which is the relationship between Ryza and Fee that proved Gus know how to really get a mascot character to pull at the heartstrings as well. We still don't know at this point if we'll be getting a Ryza 3 or another entry in the secret part of the Atelier series, but Atelier Sophie 2 is coming out next year, and seeing it take the high quality visuals from the Ryza games has me very curious to see if it will improve on its mechanics or the series as much as Ryza 2 did. But when I look back on 2021 as a year for games, my time running around in this new town in Atelier Ryza 2 and making memories with its cost still holds a special place in my heart, and I'm glad it served as a nice opening to a great year of games. While Atelier Ryza 2 was my favorite game out of the Atelier series releases and re-releases from this year, if I was to give my favorite Gus game, it would actually be Blue Reflection Second Light, the sequel to the original Blue Reflection that was announced as a pleasant surprise mid this year, but must have had a lot of work put into it with the sheer amount of character events in it and how much it built on the Blue Reflection world. It really took the ideas from the original game and made them reach their true potential, with proper expansive areas to explore, more interesting exploration that took ideas from Gus Ryza 2 and added even more, and it also made its characters really matter too, with plenty of events with each one to reward any amount of time spent with the series. And whether you were a fan of the first game, the anime, or both, or even someone getting into the series for the first time, the way it framed things perfectly from Al's perspective made it an easy game to jump into, and with the beautiful reflector transformations and moments that make it all worthwhile, it was a touching journey that I'm glad continued the series. The series is 
is at least supposed to go on with a smartphone game at some point that we'll hopefully see in the West thanks to the success of this sequel. And Second Light is also the only game on this list I'm still actively playing with New Game Plus, so I'm hoping we'll see more of it. But I'll also be spending more time with it regardless, as its battles are still fun with its unique ecosystem, and I still have plenty of events to see. So I'm glad this entry helped others discover this special series, and I'm looking forward to seeing what it will do next. I knew there was a good chance I was going to like Neo The World Ends With You, especially with having enjoyed reliving the original story and its anime. But with the first game having been on the shorter side, I wasn't expecting it to be as much of a proper JRPG as it was, but it really was a well-sized experience capturing all the style and pin changing that made the first one so great, with each day in its world feeling like a true whirlwind that made it just as riveting as the first one. I lost total track of time while playing this experience, with uncovering the clues of the mystery of the world through its different abilities, bringing in a lot of variety, and mastering its pins and its battle system kept it very easy to keep immersed too. And these things, alongside a colorful script and an equally colorful group of characters, made playing this game so enjoyable and memorable with its distinct art style and the desperation to try and make things right for Rindo, and it really sticks out in my mind as one of the most exciting journeys I played this year. It's the kind of game that makes me want to go back and play the first one, and then go back to this one to enjoy everything the series has to to offer all over again, but at the same time I'm also satisfied with my journey and have a good memory of the experience as it is, and I look back on my time fondly, truly diving into the story and forgetting what day it was, and think it's definitely a game that shouldn't be slept on from this year if you like the idea of a whirlwind story with lots of twists that feels exciting to watch unfold from start to finish. All the games I've talked about in this video feel like special points in time from this year with stories I loved, but if I was to think of one that perfectly combined beautiful visuals, use of its hardware, an ambitious story, and the execution to pull it off, Scarlet Nexus fits the bill for me as the best thing I played this year, and as its season pass content starts to roll out, is one I've been looking back on a little recently too that makes me feel confident in my decision to put it here. I started with Kasane's story that I think gave a great introduction to its world, letting me understand what was going on well as it perfectly framed everything as things got deeper, making when I played Yuito's route immediately after, which I didn't initially intend to do, carry a lot of weight, and made me understand just how deeply both its protagonists struggled to get to where the story ends up, and the way both its routes complement each other helped make a story that I was glad to see through from both sides of the story. Then there's its active battle system that combines fast and slick action with the use of psychokinesis alongside other powers that makes things feel varied and fun at all times, and it also had a good amount of challenge that required you to actually master these powers and when to use each one, made even more satisfying when doing the other route and seeing how the other party would use theirs to get through the different areas and moments seen along the way, and it really brought to life some superpower fantasies well in video game form while also creating a world where having or not having these powers was also an interesting point of world building in a society that circled around them, and the fact that you're constantly engaging with them made it easy to keep connected to the world, especially with how it all felt like a high quality gameplay experience. To top it all off, while I played on PS4, when I got my PS5, I was pleased to see just how well it uses that hardware to make something already sleek and cool easily one of the best looking JRPGs I've ever seen, and I can only hope one day I get time to play it through in full on PS5 to enjoy this part of it, although the season pass will give me a reason to fulfill that wish at least a little. And with all its beauty, strong execution, and well told intricate story, that takes advantage of every part of it, I'm sure I'll easily remember to do it as it's what I consider the best JRPG from this year and how well it executed a big and ambitious world. Thank you for watching this video, let me know in the comments below what your top 5 games were from this year and what you think of my choices. You can like and share this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel for more JRPG content like this, and ring that bell to get notifications on whenever I post so you don't miss a thing. You can check out more videos here and you can find me on social media, on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram, all at JRPG Jungle. Links to those will be in the description below. I hope you're all having a good holiday season, and until next time, thank you, bye!